Hello, beautiful people. All right, we are going to be talking about retinoids, more advanced retinoids, why you want to start bumping up your retinoids, how to keep retinoids more active. And actually, you all left me some fantastic questions that I'm really looking forward to answering. So, hey, Miss Cindy, let's go ahead and get started. Um, okay, so here's the deal with retinoids. I talk about this a lot. The reason I talk about this a lot is when I get new followers and two, retinoids are really confusing. I actually get just as many retinoid questions from other um, amazing individuals in the industry that are trying to learn and understand them more just as much as I get them from um, the users of retinoids, people who aren't professionals. So that is one of the reasons we talk about retinoids so much. Um, so here's the thing. So the reason why I always use the term retinoids and I don't really use the term retinol a lot is there are multiple types of retinoids. <laughs> so retinoids is like the blanket term for them. Um, just like vitamin C is like the blanket term for tetrahydrocarbonyl ascorbate, L ascorbic acid, potassium ascorbate, magnesium ascorbate. So retinoids is the blanket term. There's retinol aldehyde, there's retinol. There's retinoic acid, which is a prescription strength. There's retinol palpitate. Um, then there's all these new retinoid derivatives that they're discovering. Um, for example, when people use Differin gel, that's a lab-derived synthetic form of retinoids. Um, and the reason why they started making those is because there's actually all different types of retinoid receptors in the skin. And some of those retinoid receptors um, create more um, flaking and more activity than others, more irritation, more redness, more flaking than others. So with products like Differin Gel, what they've done is they've taken out the particular, let's say they're working with retinoic acid, okay? And they basically take out the parts of the retinoic acid that hit harder on those more active um, retinoid receptors than the ones that don't. So that's basically what the difference is. They're just trying to control the activity of um, the retinoic acid in the skin, and that's why you have products like Differin Gel. Retinol palpitate, basically everything is available over the counter. Um, it is regulated by the FDA on what percentages you can use, just like sunscreens and things like that, just like salicylic acid. But retinoic acid is the only one that you can get by prescription. That's where you see tretinoin. That's usually the most common one. Excuse me. Um, the difference is with, um, some doctors will put people on heavy doses of retinoic acid to help clear up their skin when they have really bad cases of acne, but they also know it has some major side effects. So I know dermatologists and I've heard many times of them putting them on a higher dose of tretinoin and retinoic acid and then prescribing steroids at the exact same time so that the person using that um, retinoic acid can actually tolerate it because the side effects can be so uncomfortable and so intense. Like your face turns beet red and your face falls off. It can be very, it's like doing a chemical peel but with the product you're applying every day. So today I wanna to talk about kind of the different retinoids, why we bump them up, why we mix them around, why we wanna use different types. We wanna use the um, retinol and retinoaldehyde. Um, so the thing is, is all the other forms of retinoids do have to convert in the skin to retinoic acid for it to fit in the receptor site, okay? And um, what they have found through studies, now that we know more information, so vitamin C and um, ret retino retinoids are the most heavily studied skincare ingredients in the United States. They've been studying them extensively for over 30 years, so we've just been learning more and more about them over time. And they have found... Um, that a combination of retinol and retinol aldehyde together actually have a better outcome in the skin than retinoic acid. It's why when cosmetics chose to create another formulation of retinoids, they have the AGP complex, which is a protein delivery system. That's your Define, Refine, Refine Plus, Refine RX. It's also the um, um, retinoid complex um, and in that complex, it is just retinol. They've put it in a protein cage to help with the delivery system so it can go into the skin more gently. Um, retinoids are an ingredient that cannot be called, that cannot be made chiral. The thing with cosmetics that sets them apart from a lot of skincare lines, 
Not as much now because more and more skincare companies are using chiral ingredients, but back in the day they were not and cosmetics was one of the very first companies to do that. Retinols, retinoids, they cannot be made chiral. Some natural, some ingredients just cannot be made chiral and chirality has everything to do with basically the purity of the ingredient. So like when you say, when you see ascorbic acid, lots of times now you see L-ascorbic acid. L-ascorbic acid is the left side of the molecule. The right side of the molecule, which is a D, it's represented by a D, that particular part is what creates kind of like the redness and the irritation. So what they do is they've taken it out because the left side of the molecule is what fits into the receptor site and the right side of the molecule does not. Back in like, my nose is a little runny today, I apologize. Back in like, I can't remember, it was the 90s, the pharmaceutical industry came out and said all drugs going forward had to be made chiral to be used because non-chiral pharmaceutical drugs can create really adverse side effects. So one of them as a perfect example is the thalidomide. I think, I think, I think I'm saying the right ingredient, thalidomide. It was given back to women um, back in like the 50s, 60s, 70s for... Maybe it was just the 50s and 60s. It was about for 10 years. It was for morning sickness. But then they started realizing that babies were being born with like the flipper arms and flipper feet. That was because thalidomide was a non-chiral ingredient. They now use the chiral version today, commonly still for um, morning sickness and other things. So that is why the pharmaceutical company started regulating it. You have to make your ingredients chiral. Sometimes um, both sides of the molecules fit into a receptor site. Sometimes one side of the molecule, that's where all the bad side effects are and all the good things are on the other side. So the best way that cosmetics found to kind of explain this, because chirality is kind of hard to explain. It's like with your hands, you can't flip your hand, right? So if this is the left side of the molecule and this is the right side of the molecule, this right side is not gonna fit in the receptor site. That's the left side, right? So the best way that cosmetics would describe it is that we basically purify the ingredients. So um, that's kind of where all this came about with cosmetics. They started doing all these chiral skincare products and retinols cannot be made chiral. So they put them in these cages. They put them inside, they encapsulate them and put them inside of a delivery system so they can more easily and gently go into the skin and then start expressing themselves why, once they get into the skin rather than creating all the problems on the top. So with the AGP complex, that is a protein delivery system, and it's just retinol that's encapsulated in a protein cage. And then there's the LG Retinex complex, which is actually retinol and retinol aldehyde, and it's inside of a lipid delivery system, which is why it is gentler on the skin, even though it's a higher formulation. So like, for example, let's look at Refine RX and Serum 24. Okay, these are both in the elite line. They're the strongest two retinoids that cosmetics makes. Ret, um, Refine RX is a 1.5 retinol. It, it'll it fry your skin off. If you're not used to using it, if you're not ready, you can't just jump into it. If you start putting Refine RX on your skin, you literally will start flaking and peeling like you're using retinoic acid. Okay, Serum 24 is actually considered stronger. It's 1% retinol and 1% retinol aldehyde. So technically it's a 2% retinoid, but because it's in that protein delivery system, I mean, I'm sorry, because it's in that LG Retinex lipid delivery system, it's actually gentler. So of the two, Refine RX is the strongest retinoid that cosmetics makes. Serum 24 is the second strongest, okay? Um, so with that being said, what happens is over the and also, okay, so the reason why there are so many different retinoids in multiple lines, like usually when you get into like more advanced skincare lines, they usually make at least two products, one at a 0.5 and one at a 1%. Sometimes you'll get one in the middle at 0.75. You never really see a 0.25 exist. Um, like when it comes to tretinoin, it comes in like a 0 0.025, a 0 0.05 and then a point 0.1. They kind of skip that point 0.75. Cosmetics, however, makes like six. They make Define, Refine, Refine Plus, Refine RX, Serum 16, Serum 24. They make seven of them because of the two different types of delivery systems. So what happens is when you start using retinoids, your skin eventually gets used to them, okay? So what happens is your skin gets used to them. They, get, they stop responding in the skin the way that you want them to. So that's why you need to bump them up. It's why for a lot of you, you started using Refine, and then after a couple months, you're like, I, li I like it, but I just, it doesn't, it's not doing in the skin what it did in the beginning. 
that's when you need to kind of bump up to refine plus. Now here's the thing. I don't always have people jump in the refine so quickly because like refine is a 0.5, refine plus is a one, and then refine RX is that 1.5. So in that protein delivery system, it can be kind of aggressive. I very commonly have people go from serum 16 to serum 24. Like I have them use one bottle of serum 16 and then jump into serum 24 when they're about 35 or older. And the reason is, is even though serum 16 is quite a strong retinoid, the lipids kind of soften it and make it more gentle. So if in the fall time you start out with your retinoid, it is time to start bumping them up. If you're still seeing that your skin's responding well, it's still looking good, it's still pink, it's still bright, it's so beautiful, you can stay exactly where you're at. But if you've noticed that the skin's kind of become stagnant, you're not getting the response from the retinoid that you want, you want to bump up to the next one in the routine. So everyone's different. But what I tend to tell people to do is if you are using Refine and you need something more and you tend to be more oily, let's say, I'm going to tell you to get Refine Plus, but I'm going to have you start doing Refine every two nights and then Refine Plus one night. And then after a couple weeks, you're going to alternate Refine, Refine Plus, Refine, Refine Plus, Refine, Refine Plus. For some people, depending on your age and your skin type, you're not going to get to Refine Plus all on its own. You start using Refine Plus every night, and even though you've gone into it slowly, you start getting the flaking, you start getting the sensitivity, so you kind of have to back off again. The other thing you can do is mix them. Do two pumps Refine and one pump Refine Plus, okay? So when it comes to retinoids, I cannot even express to you enough how much you have to listen to your skin. If you use retinoids the night before, and the next morning you go to put on your serums, and you have a serum that tends to have a little bit more alcohol in the formulation which is not a bad thing, and you kind of get a sting right here on the top of your cheeks usually, you got a little oversensitive from your retinoid the night before. So like for me, if I put Refine Plus on, and then the next day I'm a little sensitive, I actually won't use retinoids that next night. If you're using a retinoid, and it's making you a little sensitive, and you keep using it, it's going to get worse and worse. Eventually you may get a retinoid rash. Once you've developed a retinoid rash, which I can't even tell you how many of those I've given myself, you actually want to completely stop retinoids until the rash completely goes away. And then once the rash goes away, start using it again. Same with Serum 16. If you're using Serum 16, typically if you've gone through a whole bottle of 16, you can immediately jump into a bottle of Serum 24 and it's not an issue. If you find that you're a little bit sensitive, use Serum 24 every other night or alternate it with Serum 16 every other night for a couple weeks. Once um, a couple weeks have gone by, start trying to use Serum 24 all on its own if you don't have an issue. Stick with it. I can't even tell you how much you need to listen to your skin when it comes to retinoids. Now, with that being said, my most favorite thing to do in the cosmetics lineup, I started doing this about two years ago. This is something I figured out on my own. No one actually ever talked about this or educated about this, and now I want to tell everyone about it. I like to layer the two different delivery systems. I was using Serum 24 and I was getting maxed out, and I'm like, I'm bored. It's not really doing anything anymore. I started layering Refine Plus underneath it, and it started poof, changing my life. I started getting the response again. And then after a bottle of Refine Plus was gone, I jumped to Refine RX, and I was layering Refine RX followed by Serum 24, and I was loving the response that you got in, in your skin. So if you're using um, the Serum 16s and the Serum 24s, and you're like needing more of a boost, start layering them with the Refines. Um, it's not uncommon for me when someone's done with a bottle of Refine, I usually don't jump them to Refine Plus unless they're really oily. What I normally do is say, you're on Refine. I tell them then to get a bottom bottle of um, Serum 24 and start layering those, okay? And then once um, they've been on that for, you know, about two months, the Refine runs out, I have them keep the Serum 24, but then I have them switch to Refine Plus and start layering those. You can also do it the opposite. You can do Serum 16 with Refine Plus. Like, work with what you have, um kind of what's in your budget. I never want you to not use up what you already have. But if you go to start bumping up and you, um, let's, I, I, I just, if you're on Refine Plus, I wouldn't start using Serum 24 if you've never used the Serum 16s or 24. I'd have you start out with Serum 16 and then go up to Serum 24. I know this is confusing. <laughs> it's why would you start working with more advanced retinoids? It's really important. You do kind of work with an esthetician and I highly encourage people until you've really kind of mastered it and know it, I recommend you work with an esthetician for a year or two until you can really understand the retinoids. And then you're like fair game and you can kind of go out on your own. 
but it does take a little bit of time to learn how to understand retinoids and get them active in the skin and keep act be staying activated in the skin. Um, so now we have the Bacchul complex and the Bacchul complex has kind of changed everything for me. So um, studies show that the Bacchul complex responds in the skin exactly like retinol. It fits into the receptor site, works exactly the same at the exact same percentage. So if you have a 0.5 Bacchul oil complex, it's the same as using a 0.5 retinol. If you've got a 1% Bacchul oil complex, it's the exact same as using a 1% um, retinol, retinol aldehyde. It's the same thing. So I first started using Bacchul oil complex in the summer. Instead of using, um, I think I was layering at the time with Defy, but basically you're not on the retinoids in the summer. And so, because you need to take a break, right? Like you're using them in the fall, in the winter, and you're bumping up and you're bumping up and you need to take a break from them. So they keep responding in your skin. And um, also the summer months, you're much more sensitive to retinol. So it just makes sense to me that we take the break in the summer and then you start up again in the fall. And then when you start up again, you got to start out low. Like if, so, so basically last summer, before I took my break, I was using at the point, I was at the point, I was 42 I was using Refine RX and Serum 24 over the top, and I felt like I had maxed out. Like I was getting, I was looking forward to taking my break because I'm like, I am using these two insanely strong retinoids, and it's not towards the end. I, I wasn't, it wasn't responding in the skin the same way it was when I first started using them. So I was looking forward to my break. So in the summertime, the Bakuchu Oil Complex came out. I started using it. AM and PM because that's the other beauty of Bacchul complex is it's an it, you can use it in the daytime it doesn't make you sun sensitive and so I was using Defy and I was using Bacchul oil complex and then when fall came I was like I'm definitely gonna start using my retinoids again but I want to keep Bacchul oil complex in my routine because I just really like the product um, I'm finding more and more I like oils on my skin I like how they respond there's not fillers and binders and things like that. That's the thing. When you have a product that's creamy, they have to put ingredients that force the oils and the waters to stay emulsified and combined together, okay? And with just the oils, you don't have to do that. So fall came. I still kept using the Bacchul Oil Complex. It's only a 0.5. So I was like, you know what? I am going to start using my retinols too. Nope. haven't been able to. I have not been able to actually get back. I do not use a retinoid every day. I can't. The Bacchul Oil Complex, and I was really like, there's no way this works as good as a retinol. I know they say they do, but whatever. But when I started trying to transition into my retinoids this fall, I have not been able to do it. It is making me more sensitive, and I've had to back off. So what I have found is I'm keeping the Bacchul Oil Complex AM and PM, but I, and I, I don't even really mess with Refine anymore just because of my age. And what I'll do is I'll start using like serum 24 every other night and use that for a bit and then start using it refine plus like you can be a little bit more advanced with your retinoids when you're at an older age the the point fives just don't respond in the skin in the same way um but i have not even been able to get into those because i haven't stopped using the bakuchul oil complex and my skin is responding so well to it so i have been using like um serum 24 or refine plus like every third night every fourth night in my routine i haven't even been able to get up to using them daily i think i'd have to stop using the bakachu all complex to do that and for me i'm at the point with the experiences i've had and the research that i'm finding that bakachu oil complex is going to be like retinoids 2.0 i think slowly over time they're going to start replacing retinoids in the um cosmetics industry a little bit Retinoids are still the gold standard in anti-aging. They're um, phenomenal at what they do, but they can be controversial. You can't use them when you're pregnant. Um, they recommend that you don't use them when you are breastfeeding. Um, some studies will show, like in mice, they will show that like they can cause like cancer growth, but here's the deal. They, it's, and it's not cancer growth, it's tumor growth, which can be cancers. Um, that's in super high doses in mice. Like you got, you guys do know that mice will pretty much grow a tumor regardless of what you give them. If you give them higher doses, of it. mice are not the best thing to study. Um, it's a good starting point, but it's definitely not the go-to for everything. So they just can be controversial. I have never, ever heard of someone ever developing something like that from using topical retinoid use. We've been using them for so long now. 
What I have seen mostly with topical retinoid use is people who are using it year round, who tend to be in the hotter climates and things like that, they just really have pigment issues. And that's the hard thing. Like, would they have had those pigment issues without using retinoids? I think so. Like they're sun babies. They love the sun. Do I think the retinoids have ex exacerbated their pigment issues? Yep, I do. You shouldn't use retinoids in the summer. Um, you, that's why they tell you straight up, don't use them during the day. They literally work like a magnifying glass. So if you have retinoids on your skin during the day and the sun hits it, it literally works as a magnification and intensifies the sun's rays in that area. And that is why they say stay away from retinoids during the daytime. Now, with that being said, I know this can be very confusing to people, but every single chemical sunscreen you'll ever come across is going to have retinol palpitate towards the end of the ingredient list. And it's not uncommon. You don't see it as much with mineral sunscreens, but you, you will see it with every single chemical sunscreens. It's also um, common in a lot of daytime skincare products. Here's the thing. It is not at a therapeutic dose. It's why you see it towards the end of the ingredient list. It's in there at a very minimal amount. And it's actually in there because when it comes to like chemical sunscreens, it actually prevents the chemical sunscreens from oxidizing. In, in a way, it is a preservative for the chemical sunscreens. So I've had people like, oh my gosh, I can't use this stuff. It's got retinol palpitate in it. It's not part of the formulation like you think it is. It's not in there as a retinol. It is in there to protect the formulation from oxidizing. So don't stress about that, okay? Um, so let me, I kind of lost my train of thought. Give me a second. Um, so I, okay, so I do think that Bakuchul oil complex as time goes on and more studies are done on it, you're going to start seeing that um, it's going to kind of replace retinols because it doesn't have, it's not as a red flag ingredient. I need to get a Kleenex. Hold on. Um, you can use it in the AM, you can use it in the PM. Um, just like retinol, it also is an antioxidant, or like retinoids, it is also an antioxidant, but I think it's an antioxidant on a little bit different level. It's not going to make you sun sensitive. So for like all those reasons, I think we're going to start seeing it kind of replace them. So I'm going to take questions in a little bit. I want to go ahead and go over the questions in this, um, the questions that you guys left online. So the first one was like plant retinols versus medical retinols. So the difference is, so a plant retinol is going to be beta carotene. Um, it's usually going to cause the formulation to always take on a yellow color, like in the cosmetics lineup, for instance. Oh, and also, I always, always shake the refine lineup of retinoids because they do like to separate because they are a natural product. So here is Refine Plus. See how yellow it is? That's because it's beta carotene in there, okay? Same with do I have Serum 24 up in here? Let's see, Refine RX, and also in the Refines, like Refine is lighter, Refine Plus is like medium, and then, see, here's Refine RX. See how it's even more dark yellow? Because it's got a higher concentration of the retinoids. And the formulations get runnier. So Refine is, a they're all liquidy, but as you go up in the strengths, they also get more liquidy because of the higher retinoid content. Um, where's my Serum 24? Oh, you know, I think I ran out of it and I haven't even replaced it yet because I haven't even really been able to use them. So same thing with Serum 16 and Serum 24. They're going to pull yellow. If they're yellow, that's how you automatically know it is a plant-based retinoid. It's beta carotene. The white retinoids, the white ones, are either animal, they're being sourced from animals, or it's lab-derived. It's being synthesized and made in a lab. Um, so the thing is, is you can have medical retinols that are plant-based, like cosmetics are a medical grade line and they use plant-based retinols. When you get, but I think what this person asked when it came to medical retinols was more like the prescription strength ones, the ones that are retinoic acid. Um, those ones are going to be um, more animal-based because the, the pharmaceutical industry does not care. Um, it's the other reason why I kind of try to get my clients off of retinoic acid. Oh, I was going to explain this to you guys. So 
The bonus with the other retinoids, so you know how we talked about in the beginning how everything has to convert into retinoic acid? The reason why retinoic acid tends to blast you so hard is because it doesn't have to convert. It goes immediately into that receptor site and can start being used. So there's no buffer. There's no cushion. And that's one of the reasons why you have the worst side effects with it. Whereas the other ones, because they have to convert, it's just a little bit more gentler on the skin and easier for the skin to receive. Also, you need to be using retinoids in your skin, whether it's the retinoid, you know, like retinol, retinoaldehyde, bakuchul oil, I mean, bakuchul complex, like any of those. And just so you know, when I say bakuchul complex, I'm not just talking about the cosmetics product. That is what they chose to call their um, oil serum, their oil product. But when you talk about bakuchul, that's what it is. It's bakuchul complex. Like every ingredient list that's utilizing bakuchul as their retinoid in their formulation, it's always going to be usually bakuchul complex. They've extracted it from the oil. Um, they're not just using bakuchul oil in the formulation. It's gone through a process. They've taken the, um, it's basically a type of retinol derivative, a retinoid derivative. They've taken it out of the oil and concentrated it. Okay. So, um, you have to use them at least every other day to stay retained in the tissues. So if when it's so common when you're talking to your clients, this is especially for the pro estheticians, um, you'll have people come in your office, they're using a prescription strength retinol and they're like, yeah, well, it makes me too sensitive. So I'm only using it like, you know, once or twice a week. Girlfriend, you're not getting the benefit of that. If your retinoid is causing you to be too sensitive, you either need to go down in the strength or buffer it with something, mix it with something else. Put your moisturizer on first and then put your retinoid over the top. If you're not using it at least every other night, it's not staying retained in the tissues, so you're just not getting the benefit from it like you think you are. Um, so the other thing with the medical ones, why I'm not a fan, is they all have parabens in them. So again, the medical industry is just trying to get you a drug. They don't care what's in the formulation. When you get tretinoin um, prescription strength, it's full of crap. It's full of filler. So you got to remember, if the bottle says it's 0.05%, you know, it's like, a chew. Like, that's how much actual drug is in the formulation. And then everything else is just fillers and binders and preservatives. And I think tretinoin, um, depending on the company that makes it, it has three to four of the parabens. And just to go over parabens really fast, because I tend to get this question every time, I forget that... It's become so common knowledge in my world for so long that I forget that people. it's still new information to a lot of people. Parabens, studies strongly suggest that they mimic, they're an endocrine disruptor. They mimic estrogen in your body, which can turn high, higher doses of estrogen in your system is what causes breast cancer. It's one of the causes of breast cancer. So that is the problem with parabens. It's why you have seen so many like paraben free, paraben free. So many companies have reformulated to get rid of their parabens. Cosmetics has never used them, ever. Um, Kiehl's is a perfect example. So Kiehl's, um, in their older formulations and their older products, they don't put paraben. It has parabens. Kiehl's has parabens. But any of the new products that they formulate, they don't use them. Same with um, another line that does that is Environ. Like Environ is a really well-known um, medical-grade skincare line that people really enjoy. All their products that at a certain point going forward, they stopped using parabens, but some of the older products in the line, they still have parabens in them. If you're using uh, prescription strength retinoic acid, you are putting retinoids on your, I mean, you're putting parabens on your face every time you use it. Um, so that's just between plant retinoids and medical. Um, when will the purging end? Girlfriend, I don't know. <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, purging should usually not last more than about a month. Like they usually say, some people purge for a week or two. Some people purge for a whole month. The common answer that we're trained as estheticians to say is, um, you know, it takes a whole 28 days for the cellular turnover process to happen. But again, that only happens till about age 30. If you're 45, it could be taking 46, 47, 42 days to fully turn over. So they tell you to give a whole chance, like the very, very bottom is going to come to the very, very top and it can take that long. But I have had clients through experience working with um, the cosmetics line. I once had a client who had bad acne and she started using the Clarity Serum. And Clarity does have 0.25% of the, it's got 1% of the AGP complex, the protein delivery system, which is like a 0.25 retinol. 
that, and she stuck with it. That woman purged for two and a half to three months. Like she went through a whole bottle of it and she's like, I'm still breaking out. And I'm like, I understand if you want to stop, but I promise you this product is not breaking you out. You are still purging. You are still purging. If you can just stick with it, I promise you there will be a rain, a, you know, gold at the end of this rainbow. And after about two and a half to three months, her skin finally started purging and she ended up having the skin of her life. You never know what's really in someone's skin. It could be a buildup of petroleum silicone in their tissues. It could be a hormonal thing that's trying to purge out. Like there's so many different things that can cause purging that you just have to give it time. And I'm so sorry when you go through purging. I know it's rough. I had acne for 15 years, so I completely understand and get how hard it can be. The other thing is, is sometimes when your skin is actually having an allergic reaction to a product, one of the things that it will do is start breaking out on you to basically say, hey, get this shit off my skin. But this is kind of how I can tell the difference between an allergic reaction and purging. Purging's pretty consistent. You start getting some stuff, stuff will clear up, more stuff will come out, but it doesn't like progressively every day get more pimples and more pimples and more pimples and more pimples. If it keeps progressively just coming out and never getting, like it's not consistent purging, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. That can be a sign of an allergic reaction, but then also the pimples tend to be really angry and inflamed and sensitive and sore and hot. Like it's more of a kind of an allergic reaction breakout versus um, a, pur a, a purging response. So I do tend to have people kind of pay attention to that. Um, if you have a gut feeling that it might be an allergic response, that could be it. But usually when it's an allergic response, I found that that tends to happen more with like I've never seen somebody have it with a retinoid. I've seen it with cleansers. I've seen it with moisturizers. Um, I've seen it with some serums, um, but I've never actually seen it with a retinoid. The other thing that I have clients will happen, and it has frustrated me only because, that's the thing, when you have had acne for 15 years with no end in sight and your skin is always breaking out, when people get one or two zits, you're like, I'm so sorry if this sounds insensitive to some of you. I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm literally like, get over yourself. You've got three zits. Like it's good. <laughs> you didn't have three zits every day of your life for 15 years. Like it's going to be okay. And it's not uncommon for people to start on a product and then they're, they inst they're like, oh, it broke me out. And they instantly stop using it. Love, you're purging. Just because it's breaking you out a little bit doesn't mean the product's going to break you out. You've started on a new product. It's getting acclimated to your tissues. It's getting the stuff out of your skin. Like if you're using more of like a petroleum or silicone based product, that I have to understand a little bit more. But when it comes, when you're starting to use like corrective plant-based stuff like cosmetics, it's almost always, always purging. I've even had people break out from my oils, particularly like the lighter and the heavier. And I know um, I've talked to one or two people. There was a gal who like, she's always been on natural products her whole life. There was nothing that she really needed to purge out of her skin. It was really heavy, um, healthy, but heavier and lighter broke her out. And then she switched over to eye care and had no issues with it. So I don't like to say anymore. My oils absolutely will not break you out because they could. But I mean, like right when you think that it's not going to happen, stuff happens. It's kind of like saying that like, oh, my kid would never, never lie. Really? If you're saying my kid never lies, your kid is totally lying. Um, the heavier and the lighter oils have salicylic acid in them. It's got um, lighter. The very first ingredient is strawberry seed oil. And it's like the fourth or fifth ingredient in the heavier comp in the heavier oil. The salicylic acid in those can cause you to purge a little bit. So just because you put a product on your face and you start breaking out a little bit, it doesn't always mean a bad thing. So if you want, please try to give the product a little bit more time rather than just like jumping two or three days in because you're actually probably having more of a purging response and not a breakout response. Okay, the next question was, I'm just on the Bacchul train. Can I just skip retinol and only do Bacchul? Yes, you can, sister friend. The studies show that it works exactly the same in the skin at the exact same percentage. For example, the eye complex that Cosmetics makes, this new Rolls Royce eye cream that um, I completely bitched about when it came out because I was mad it was 150 bucks. And then I started using it and I was like, oh. Mm. This guy has 1% Bacchul oil complex in it. So if you um, have a client who has never used retinoids, 
they're probably going to have to kind of work into this eye cream a little bit because it's a 1%. If you already use retinoids in your routine, you're not gonna have an issue. But if you're brand new to it, you could have a little bit of response to it. I had a client who she was using Humidify. She doesn't use any retinoids at all, just not her thing. And she is a junkie for Humidify. She absolutely loves it. And um, I was like, you know what? Do you want to try this new Alt-A? So Cosmetics came out with this new moisturizer in the Elite line called Alt-A. And it's like the sister to the eye cream. It's got the ectones in it. It's got 1% Bacchul complex in it. So if you're using Alt-A as your hydrator, you don't even need to use the Bacchul oil complex that Cosmetics makes because the Alt-A is a one percenter. Um, it's got some hyaluronic acid. Like it's similar to this eye cream, but the eye cream actually has more actives in it. Like this has caffeine in it. The moisturizer doesn't. I don't, I don't think. So um, she got a retinoid rash around her eyes. She's like, even though she was like putting it down here, you know, she started noticing, you know, that it was getting closer to her eye while she slept and stuff. And she's like, it's, it's kind of, it's irritating my eyes. It's breaking me out. And so I was like, you know what? I bet you she is reacting to like, it's the, the 1% is too strong. Like um, either I should have had her work into the moisturizer slowly, or usually when somebody is on a product of that level, they're already kind of using retinoids in their routines, but she wasn't. So you absolutely can only use Bakuchu Oil Complex. I'm going to, in the next little bit, do a whole skincare routine that's just oils. Oil cleanser, um, well, not Mystic. I'm never taking Mystic out. But then, like, the vitamin C is going to be oil. The retinoid is going to be oil. The eye product's going to be oil. The hydrate is going to be oil. Um, you absolutely can just use Bakuchu Oil. It's going to function in the skin exactly the same. And I will not be surprised with as the Bakuchul oil complex becomes more popular that cosmetics comes out with a 1%. They'll have the 0.5 Bakuchul and then they'll come out with a 1% or a 0.75 so people can bump up in that just like they can the other retinoids. So go for it. I have not even been able to really use retinoids because I've stuck with my, between the Refine RX, that cleanser I absolutely love, that's a 10% salicylic acid, Using that three days a week and my Bakuchu oil complex and just adding in a little bit of retinoid here and there, the it, it's changing my skin. It just is. Um, should people stop retinoids when they're going on a hot vacation? Mm -hmm. I don't take ever take retinoids on vacation. So when I go on my vacations, I tend to keep my skincare really simple. Partly is because like I'm on vacation and I don't want to pack a lot. I want to keep it simple. I pack my face oils. I pack. Usually I'll just pack Simply Brilliant and use it AM and PM so I don't have to take two lighteners and brighteners with me. Like as many of you know, I always use Excel Plus at night and Simply Brilliant during the daytime, but um, I'll just bring Simply Brilliant on vacation with me because in that way I can just use one serum. So I use, I use, I bring a cleanser, I bring my oils and I bring Simply Brilliant and I bring sunscreen and that is it. I think depending on where you're going, you need to stop using your retinoids about two weeks before you go on vacation and don't take them with you. They are going to make you more sun sensitive. Just like with chemical peels, like I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me where we start a chemical peel series, you know, we're supposed to keep them close together. And then we'll do like the second peel and it's definitely time to do the third one. And they're like, okay, so I'm going to Mexico in two weeks. And I'm like, bitch, like, what? We should, we should have started this peel series when you got back from vacation. <laughs> um, so yeah, you need to, like you, if you're going to go on vacation to a hot climate, like, you know, a tropical vacation, you need to treat it like you're, it's summertime. No retinoids, lots of sunscreen, lots of Simply Brilliant. Like I cover myself like crazy with Simply Brilliant. Like I go overload when I know I'm going to a hot vacation or floating the river or something like that, because I want to get all the protection I can get. I, of course, always also bring Mystic because Mystic has its own, um, it's anti-radial, so it protects you. And then the other thing I will take, um, sometimes actually now that I think about it, I do take Papoxide as well. The daytime antioxidant serum that, um, see, I don't even have it right now because it's winter and I've got radiance and a firm up in here. Um, but the Papoxide has UV protectors in it. It's bright orange. Um, and so I'll also take that antioxidant serum because it's going to help protect me from the sun. But that's kind of all I take on vacation. Okay, so this person's on Serum 24. What next? So I would absolutely keep Serum 24 in your routine. If you only want to spend money on one product, you're going to want to bump up to Refine RX. At this point, Refine RX is going to be stronger. Um, but what I really encourage people to do 
is get both. So here's the thing. When you're using the refine lineup, you should be using three pumps to cover from here to here, okay? Two pumps will get the face and neck, but I never, ever not include the chest. Like, this is not an option for me. There's a reason why my chest looks this good at 43 years old, okay? It's because I've really protected it. As I've gotten in the last four to five years, I really started put, pulling my serums down more. I have not been pulling my serums down here my whole life. But around 35, 36, I realized, what am I doing? I Like, come on. So I just add one more pump, and I include the chest, and I make sure I've got... A lot of mist. Oh, my nose. Okay. Um, so if you're only wanting to buy one, get Refine Plus. But what I would do is, you know, it's three pumps. Well, when you start combining the two different delivery systems, I prefer to layer them. As you're slowly working into them, you can cocktail them. But I do prefer to layer them. You bump down to two pumps. So it's like two pumps of Refine Plus and then followed by two pumps of Serum 24. So in the end, you're only using one more pump of product. I'm telling you, it's worth layering them. It truly is. So if you're on Serum 24, I would add Serum Plus, um, Refine Plus into your routine and start layering it every other night for a couple weeks and then bump up to every night. And when you're doing it every night, you're going to do, I'm sorry, when you're doing it every other night, you're going to do two pump, pumps Refine Plus followed by two pumps of Serum 24. But then on the night that you're not using the Refine Plus, your off night where you're just using Serum 24, you're going to go back to three pumps, okay? Because you want to make sure. That's the thing. People I know sometimes you want to use less product because you're trying to be more cost effective. If you're not getting therapeutic level doses on your skin, you're not getting the benefit. Like that's why I'm not a fan of cocktailing. Because when you cocktail, you start rubbing until the cows come home to get everything mixed in. And let's say I need three pumps of a growth factor and three pumps of an antioxidant serum. It's going to take me forever to rub in six pumps of product to my skin. So what do we do? We're like, okay, well, I do, I'll do i do like one pump of the growth factor and like two pumps of the antioxidant serums. Well, now you are not getting the therapeutic levels on your skin to make the changes happen. Don't skimp on the skincare. If you're already investing money on it, if you're already spending, if you've if already, you, you know, you've got it, use it. Don't try to, don't use less thinking that you're trying to save money. It's, you're just not getting the same benefit. So with you, I would add Serum 24, I would add Refine Plus to it, um, or just get Refine RX if you don't want to have to layer the two. Okay, so I'm turning 40 and I've never used retinols. What should I start? So if you've never used retinols, I actually, at this point, you can start with Serum 16, but honestly, I would put you in the Bakuchul oil complex. I mean, have you use it morning and night, whereas with Serum 16, you're just going to use it at night. I can't tell you how kind of blown away I am at that product. I really didn't think, I'm like, it's, no, it's not. Yes, it is. It, re <laughs> it really does work. So I'd maybe start with that. Um, but you can also absolutely get um, Serum 16 and start with that one. If you had said, you know, I'm 35 and I'm new to retinols, I would have asked, like, if you're more dry, I would have put you in, um, if you were more oily, I would have put you in refine. And if you're more dry, I would put you into serum 16. Um, but turning 40, usually your skin starts to, you know, you're not as oily as it used to be. So I would probably just say serum 16 or the Bakuchu oil complex. And if you tend to have a little bit more sensitive skin and you really don't use anything active on it, I would actually tell you to use serum 16 every other night for a week or two and then bump up to every night. But if you already use kind of medical grade active skincare, you can start using serum 16 every other, I mean, every single night right away. Now with some people, you can also do this. Um, like for you, you could start with serum 24 and do the same thing that I have people do with refine when they're brand new to a retinoid. Once every third night for a couple weeks, then once every other night for a couple weeks, and then up to every night. So you can start with higher strength retinoids and just work into them much slower or you can start with a lower dose and start using it more regularly. Um, Little Miss Jane asks, difference in the bot oil and Defy? Sorry, late question. Okay, so the difference is, so Define is, um, Define is Defy with the three alpha hydroxy acids. It's got tartaric, mandelic, and lactic acid in it. And then they've added a 0.25 retinol to it. So it has 1% of that, um, AGP complex delivery system in it. So I don't ever sell anybody to find. It's a very rare rarity. I'll sell it sometimes. Um, I recommend it sometimes to people in their 20s. Um, but in general, I don't even mess with Define. So cosmetics used to train like, go ahead and start them on Define. And then once they've gone through a bottle of Define, then have them start with Refine. And then depending on their age, 
you know, after they've gone through a bottle of Refine or two, then they can bump up to Refine Plus. So the thing is, is Define is a huge tube. Like Define comes in a tube like this, okay? It's like 1.5 ounces. It takes forever to go through it. And you're going to get used to a 0.25 retinol really fast. So the reason I don't mess with Define is like within a month, they're ready to bump up. But they have a whole tube of this stuff. So of course you want to use it up. And I just feel like it's kind of a disservice. So what I tend to do is instead of doing that, if you're over 30 or if you're under 30 and you have oilier skin, I will still start you in Refine and have you do the whole once a night for um, once a night, um, every third night for a couple weeks, once every other night for a couple weeks, and then every night. I just have you work into it more slowly. The other thing is when you start using the retinoids is when you're totally brand new to them, I really only want you putting it on your face. Do not start pulling it down your neck yet. I do still want you using two pumps of it, but don't put it on your neck yet because your body's not used to it. You've never used it. And you will get a retinol rash in your necklace lines. You'll know because you'll start getting these little red rings in the necklace lines. It happens because when you sleep, it pulls in there. And the more you keep using it, it'll start getting itchy. And then when you finally figure it out, you'll stop it. Then it can take like two weeks for these suckers to go away. They can take a bit to go away. So what I found is if you start and the skin tissue is different than the body tissue. It just is. There's these pilar sebaceous glands. You can always tell because when you do chemical peels, even though you'll pull chemical peels all the way down to here, down to here, you'll have a very defined line of exactly where more skin peeled off. And then just down here, you had a little bit of flaking, if anything. Um, so I found when you get the adjacent tissue comfortable with retinoids, then that then it will you won't get a retinoid rash. OK, so I tell people to use it just on their face for a couple weeks then bump it up to three pumps and start pulling it down. And then you will avoid that whole retinoid rash issue on your neck. Um, I'm 46, not using retinol. Is Bacchol Complex good enough to use instead? Yep, I encourage it. Um, you may, you can also, you can do the Bacchol Oil Complex um, since you're completely new to retinoids. Like I know one of the reasons why I haven't been able to get into my retinoids as much this winter as I'd like to with using the Bakucho oil complex is my skin stays really exfoliated. Um, as you guys know, like you saw me do multiple chemical peels last year. I've hardly done any this year. I did two milder ones in the beginning and I'm getting ready to do a stronger one in the next week or two. And then that's it. Like my skin has been well, so ex has been so well exfoliated that I'm just not needing it. Like you shouldn't have to do chemical peels every single year. In the beginning, as you're like getting everything peeled away, sometimes you have to do a series of, you know, like you start in fall, go to spring, then you stop and you're like, okay, I still have more work to do. I still have more pigment to pull out. You'll start chemical peels in the fall again. I've never had, I've never seen somebody have to do that three years in a row. When the winter comes and they're on the third year, they'll, they're like me where they do like a couple here and there just to perk up the skin. There is some pigment here that I'm going to work on, which is the only reason why I'm going to be doing a stronger chemical peel soon is because I want the pigment gone. But in regards to exfoliation, I don't need it. Like look how great my forehead looks. I've never in my life ever had Botox up in here. I have recently been playing with a little bit of Botox in um, the glabellas only because basically I want my eyebrows lifted. And when we just lifted the eyebrows, I still wasn't getting enough lift. And they're like, you have to do this area to get this to lift. Um, so I've had it done twice now. I do it like five months apart. I've been playing with it a little, but I have still never had it up here because I don't need it. I have stayed this exfoliated because I've been doing chemical peels for 13 years and I use really good skincare. Um, so at 46, you can absolutely just use the Bacchul Oil Complex. You can start using it in the day and then bring in a retinol at night if you want to start using a retinol. Um, but absolutely, start playing with it. You're going to be surprised at the benefits you get from it. Um, and then it says, once increased strength for how long? It depends on your skin. So again, I listen to it. Like you start using the retinols and then they you notice that they just aren't kicking in like they used to. That's when it's time to bump. Um, okay. So one of our lovely estheticians, she's asking, do you like pure C with retinol? No, you can't do that. It's a pH issue. So if you want to, I have an amazing live that I did on vitamin C a couple weeks ago. Um, L ascorbic acid is not, L ascorbic acid has to have a pH of 3.5 or less for it actually to be absorbed into the tissues. 
So Pure C, actually, I know that it is trained that you can sprinkle Pure C into anything. That's not true now. Now that I've done the research that I've done, it's not true. You need to sprinkle Pure C into something that's 3.5 pH or less. It'll still go on your skin and it will dissolve, but if it can't get through that lipid barrier of your skin, you're not, it's, it can't get in. Um, I know for sure Pure Enzyme, you can sprinkle into that. I need to look at some of the other cosmetics serums, but a 3.5 pH, so some studies said four or lower, but the majority of the studies I saw was really solid at 3.5 or less, and 3.5 is like orange juice, grapefruit juice, and your vagina. Your vagina is a 3.5 pH. So orange juice and grapefruit juice, like that's pretty, that's pretty acidic, right? So um, you can, it, it has, to, so look up the products, look and see what the pHs are. It's one of the things I need to do. But you're not, if you're putting Pure C into like a face oil or a lotion, or you're putting it into like a firm or radiance, we don't know actually how much is going in. The, the reason why it has to be a low pH is because it's got the, you need that acid to break through to get it delivered into the skin. With that being said, tetrahexadecalus scorbate is actually retinoids friend. They love each other. So Brilliant C with the retinols are going to be amazing. Um, because tetrahexadecal ascorbate is a superior form of lipid vitamin C, it doesn't need a pH. It's going to go right in. Your skin's got that lipid barrier. It's like lipids and lipids. They get married. They love each other. They go right in. Um, you're going to start seeing almost all vitamin Cs, I bet, in the next five to six years. The only thing you're going to see in skincare is going to be tetrahexadecal ascorbate because it's it's the only thing that can, um, it's stable. P um, L ascorbic acid is extremely unstable. It's a catalytic, I don't really understand the chemistry to that point, but it's something like it's a catalytic molecule. It's got a, she's unstable. She freaks out in water. She, you know, she doesn't do well in water. She doesn't do well in higher pHs. And the Board of Dermatology, not that I like to listen to anything they say, but the Board of Dermatology, the reason they advise against using L-ascorbic acid with retinoids is because retinols need more of an alkaline to get in, and vitamin C is more of that acidic, so it's a pH issue and they kind of fight each other, and because of that, they tend to sit on the surface and then they create irritation. So, um, yeah, use Brilliant C instead. It is a 3% um, tetrahexadecal ascorbate, but mine, the, the one that I make, is um, a 7%. Um, and studies do show they do kind of like a 5% or higher to really get the benefits. All the studies I saw that had the best benefits of tetrahexadecal ascorbate were between a 5 and 10% formulation. Tetrahexadecal ascorbate is an expensive ingredient, and so I went with the middle, I went at 7%. The other thing is that with my formulation, it also has ferulic acid in it, and ferulic acid causes vitamin C to work, was it 4 or 8% fold better? Um, let me look it up, because this is really important to me. Um, yeah, tetrahexadecal ascorbate is far more stable, less irritating, easily formulated into oil-based formulations. Um, The other thing is that my, um, with my Brilliant c &E that has the tetrahexadecal ascorbate in it, I also put it in a base of oils that are high in vitamin C. So I've got cockadoo plum in there. I've got goji berry. I've got sea buckthorn. So my base oil has about 1.5 to 2% vitamin C in it as well. And so you're, it's really like an 8 to 9% um, vitamin C serum. The reason why in these um, the, the other thing I found out with vitamin C, sorry, um, I, I get so excited about vitamin C. Um, there's no point in using vitamin C over 20%. They found that at a 35% concentration, you still get the exact same benefits as using a 20% formulation, but the 35% can be more irritating. So there's no point in looking for anything above 20, but when it comes to tetrahexadecal ascorbate, it's a little bit different. You do want to have, you do not need like 10% max is what I was seeing. And, um... Oh, vitamin E makes it... Okay, so here's the thing. The other thing was with my Brilliant C&E, it's loaded with nat all eight natural forms of vitamin E. Whereas in the skincare industry, there's only one form that they use. It's a synthetic. So when you put it with vitamin E, it makes vitamin C work fourfold better. And when you put it with um, ferulic acid, it's, a, it's an increase of eight. So that's why I feel like my Brilliant C&E is very superior.
but the one that cosmetics makes is a really lovely product it also is in a thinner form like it's a uh it's an mct oil base so it's much thinner so i know there's many estheticians out there that love dermaplaning with it whereas you would not be able to dermaplane with my brilliant cne because it's a little bit thicker okay back to the questions i got diverted um can we do home chemical peels well no but I do with my business because of COVID, I started shipping professional chemical peels. I have been doing this for 10 years. This is not my first rodeo. I'm an absolute master and a pro. When you work with me, we do a, skin, a peel consultation. And then if you choose to move forward, I ship you the kit. It includes all post care and we apply everything together over Zoom. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I apply. I have provide all the post cares because I want you to have the best outcome. I also, if you have local estheticians in your area, I highly recommend that you go see them. Like, it's so lovely going in and seeing an esthetician and getting peels by them. Um, but would I buy a peel off of Amazon and do it? No, you don't exactly know what you're doing. Like, I'm sure sometimes it's going to be absolutely fine. But I've also seen the photos of people who got a chemical peel off of Amazon. It wasn't one that they actually expected and they fried their face. Girlfriend, it's your face! <laughs> you can't fix, you can't always fix the stuff that you do to your face. So I do think you should be a little bit reserved, okay? Where's... I'm going back to my questions. I apologize. There was one more. Um, and if you guys have any more questions, feel free to pop them in. You know how much I love questions. Okay. I think that was the last one. Once increased strength for how long? Listen to your skin. It'll tell you. Do you all have any more questions? I hope I made sense. Sometimes I ramble and then I think back on my life because I never watch these. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, did I just go into an ADD moment? And like, I made no sense at all. Um, so let me see if there's any questions that I missed. I don't think I did. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I truly do really appreciate all the support, um, that you've given to my brand, my knowledge. Um, I'm so excited about where this journey is going to take me. All right, everyone. I think that's about it. Um, let me see. Please save this life. I always do. I save all of them. So I don't, they're not, you'll see them on my feed, but you know, on Instagram, you see at the top that there's a grid and then next to that is like the real symbol. And then next to that is like the play triangle. If you just hit that, that's where just all the lives are and nothing else. So that's the easiest way to find my lives is to go to that tab at the top of your all your uh, in my profile because then you can just find the live videos i the, honestly the reason why i go on live is because i want to save them it's why when i do my cosmetics takeovers i don't tend to do as much on the um stories i tend to do a lot more lives because the lives get saved and then people can reference them um so yeah can i put pure c and cell id together you can but i can't guarantee that pure c is going to be going into your skin because it's not acidic enough you need a pH of 3.5 or less, ideally, for proper vitamin C absorption. One of the things I'm going to do this weekend, because I keep procrastinating, is I'm going to pull out the cosmetics training manual. And the beauty of that manual is it actually tells us, I think it does, they, it may have changed, but they used to tell us what the pH of every single product was. And so they can tell you, like, you can totally put that in Simply Brilliant. You can totally put that in Pure C. Um, I mean, in Excel Plus, um, things like that. Well, maybe it shouldn't be in Excel Plus because it's, no, it can't. If it's a pH, if it's, if the pH is low and it can go in, it's not going to create issues with the retinoids. It's because if you don't have a low enough pH for it to go in, it sits on the top and then it interacts with those retinoids and those two don't like each other. That's why I highly, highly, highly encourage people to start switching over to the form of vitamin C that is the tetrahexadecalascorbate. And it's why as I start coming out with my body line, like my body oil, I, I probably won't make body products that don't have tetrahexadecalascorbate in them because tetrahexadecalascorbate is so essential for healthy skin. Um, vitamin C is because it tends to be water soluble. It never really makes it up to the top layers of your tissues for you to get your benefits. You, you know, pee it out of your system first and you can infuse up to 20 times more vitamin C into your skin topically than the, what naturally occurs there. And so it is going to cause my body oil and things like that to be a little bit higher price point. But again, I am an organic medical grade line. And so because of that, I want my products to be medical, to be therapeutic level, to give yourself, 
you know, give your tissues healing and nutrients and things like that. So I might decide to make one without and one with, and then people can decide which one they want and what price point they want to pay. But then there's a whole nother product in the mix. So I got to see. Packaging is kind of a bear. The only reason I haven't come out with more products is because I cannot tell you how stressful the packaging issue is. You can't really get it into in the United States. I have to get it overseas, which I don't have an issue with. It just takes forever to get it. And when I say you can't get it in the U.S., yeah, I can get this bottle made in the U.S., but what happens is, is they still buy this bottle in China. None of it's made here. They buy this bottle in China and bring it over here, and then they spray paint and screen print it here in the U.S., but then I have to pay them the middleman fee. Whereas if I can just get the whole thing made over in China, it saves me money. I have a consultation with you and I can't wait. Ooh, I can't wait either. I love my skin consultations. They're kind of my favorite. Um, okay, so is Simply Brilliant better? Simply Brilliant and Brilliant C in the cosmetics line are two totally different products. Simply Brilliant and Excel Plus are lighteners and brighteners. Brilliant C or my Brilliant C and E are antioxidant products. Okay, they're antioxidants. They're going to increase collagen production. They're going to be antioxidants. They're going to give you all the benefits of vitamin C. Simply Brilliant does have l ascorbic acid in it which is why it makes me think that the ph is actually lower in it um they but as you know like when you first get brilliant c if you're brand new to it it comes out and it's barely a pale yellow color barely a pale orange and then over time as it sits if you're not using it up it will start turning darker orange on you and what's happening is the l ascorbic acid is oxidizing in the formulation because it's a lip it's because it's a aqueous serum it's got water in it and vitamins L ascorbic acid breaks down in water. Um, the thing is, is as L ascorbic acid starts to oxidize and turn darker in color, the only bad thing about it is it's, so let's say it's in um, Simply Brilliant at 5%. I don't know the exact percentage, but I think maybe it's in there around there. When it starts to turn orange, maybe now it's only a 5%. Maybe it's only a 3%. Maybe it's only a 2%. It loses its efficacy, okay? Cosmetics is totally aware of this. It's why they've only... That's why they've never chosen to put um, L ascorbic acid in any other product. They just make the Pure C crystals. Um, but the thing with the Simply Brilliant formulation is there's 10 lighteners and brighteners in the formulation. There's 10. So they put um, the L ascorbic acid in there because it has so many amazing benefits. But they also know, okay, if this one ingredient oxidizes and quits working, they have nine other ingredients in the formulation to still support it being a lightener and brightener. If you have a lightener and brightener and they're claiming L, they're claiming the L ascorbic acid is one of the actives in it and it literally only has like two or three actives and your serum starts turning orange on you, it's not a very good lightener and brightener. Now you only have like one or two left ingredients. And when it comes to lighteners and brighteners, there's so many different ways that melanation can create pigment issues, pigment issues in your skin. There's like making more um, melanin in the tissues. There's keeping the melanin broken up. There's breaking down the melanin. So all those lighteners and brighteners, the reason why formulations use so many, like with even by Skin Better Science, this one has, um, I think it's 14. I think, four, I think it has 14 lighteners and brighteners in it. The reason why I like using this along with Excel Plus or Simply Brilliant is because these do don't have any like ingredients. Like I think the only thing repeated in both formulations is um, Gaelic acid. Okay. So the reason why, even though they're both lightener and brightener, is sometimes I use both when I'm working on my pigment is because this is going to hit it at all the ingredients that it can hit it at all theirs. And then now I'm using 14 other ingredients that are completely different than it's hitting it at all different levels. You have to hit pigmentation at multiple ways because it's a sticky wicket. You can't just use the only ingredient that you can just use like the one ingredient it's going to help. Um, that like significantly where you can see it is hydroquinone and hydroquinone is a whole nother there's a reason why it's banned in so many countries. You have to be careful with it. You've got to work with the physician. Um, you've got to work off of it slowly. You cannot just go off of it when you decide not to work with it anymore because you can get rebound hyperpigmentation. You can only use the higher concentrations for about three or four months till you have to take a break. There's just like so many rules with it. Um, it's... Yeah. So that's why when you find other lighteners and brighteners that don't have hydroquinone... They have so many different actives in them because they have to hit it at so many different areas to get it to work. All right. Thank you, everyone, so, so much. I look forward to seeing you all next week. I can't even remember what my... Oh, I don't think I'm doing a live next week because I'm going to be at the coast celebrating um, Shannon, my marketing manager's birthday. We're having a girls weekend. We rented an Airbnb. 
It's got a hot tub. We're going to go play at Yahawks. But then the week after that, I'm going to be going over. I know one of my lives in the month of March is going to be teen skincare. And what is the other one? I can't remember. I got to look at my calendar, but I've got them all planned out. So I won't see you next week, but I'll see you the week after that. And I look forward to it. Please let me know if you have any questions. Light and love to you all. Mwah!